let's consider the following contingency table. Here we've done a survey of a grand total of 200 people. And we've asked them about their graduation status. Did they have a high school diploma or not? And we asked them how much money they made. So if they made less than $40,000 a year or if they made more than $40,000 a year. And the breakdown of the, of the 200 people that we talked to looked like this. Um, there were 182 people that had a high school diploma, 90 of which made less than 40K and 92 of which made more than 40K. There were only 18 people surveyed that did not have a high school diploma. 15 of those made less than 40K and three of those made more than 40K. So as we look at our values here, let's consider some probabilities that we can make here. If we pick a person at random from our surveyed group, what's the probability that that person has a high school diploma? The first thing I always like to consider when I'm figuring out probabilities is what the bottom number is. What's the whole that we're looking for? In this case, we're picking a person that was surveyed and there were 200 total people that were surveyed. So the bottom number in my probability calculation or percentage calculation is going to be 200. On the top, I'm only interested in those that have a high school diploma. So I'm looking at this. My probability that I'm interested in doesn't say anything about how much money they're making. It's just what's the probability that they have a high school diploma. So in this case, what I want is I want the total of people with a high school diploma. There were 182 people out of the 200. And if I divide that on my calculator, I get 0.91 and I can convert that to a percentage by multiplying by 100 and I get 91% of the people that I spoke to in the survey had a high school diploma. Now, as you're doing your homework, it's going to be critical for you to show me two pieces of information for showing your work. There's not a lot of calculations involved, but I want to see the unreduced fraction here that you get and then what that's equivalent to as a percentage. When you check your work, you're always I only have included the percentages um, so you can see if you got your answer correct or not. But if not, then you need to go back and refigure out what that fraction is going to be to get you the answer that you're interested in. So you need to have both of these pieces of information. Okay, so back to a probability example. Let's suppose that I want to know what is the probability of the, if I pick a person here that I surveyed, what's the probability that that person made more than $40,000 a year? Again, I'm looking at all the people surveyed, so 200 is my grand total, becomes the bottom number of my fraction. And the top number is how many people made more than 40,000 a year. Here's my made more than 40,000 a year. I'm not differentiating here about high school diploma or not, so I'm going to include all 95 of those people. In this case now, I can do 95 divided by 200, which gives me 0.45. Four, five. 0.475, excuse me, or 47.5 of the people surveyed made more than $40,000 per year. Now what happens, sometimes I'm interested in a slightly different group. What's the percentage of people that did not have a high school diploma and made more than $40,000 a year? Well, in this case, I'm still just picking a person from my survey I surveyed 200 people. In this, this time, I'm looking for this and. What's the percentage or probability of people that did not have a high school diploma and made more than 40,000? Well, my people that did not have a high school diploma are in this row. The people that made more than 40,000 are in this column. And so when I'm looking at a situation with and, I need both of these things to happen. 
They have to have have to not have a high school diploma and have to make more, more than $40,000. So there's only three people that fit that description. And now I have three divided by 200, which is 0 0.015 or 1.5%. Anytime that you see the word and, both categories have to apply. And that's going to affect the top number in your list. Now, let's consider a different situation here. Let's figure out what the probability is that someone did not have a high school diploma or made less than $40,000 a year. This time we have the or word here. Or has a very specific mathematical definition. Or means that it's going to be one or the other or both. Just one of those conditions want to apply. I want to include all the people that did not have a high school diploma. I want to also include all the people that made less than $40,000 a year. Now if I look up here, when I look at all the people that did not have a high school diploma, I'm looking at this row here. When I'm looking at all the people that made less than $40,000, I'm looking at this row here. But because my key word here that I'm looking for this time is or, either of those conditions are gonna apply. So I wanna include all 18 of these people that don't have a high school diploma, and I wanna include all 105 people that made less than $40,000 a year. The problem is that we have some overlap in these categories, right? I have these 15 people that made less than $40,000 a year and did not have a high school diploma. I can't count those students or people from my survey twice. So what do I want to do? I like to just go back, and this is, again, one of those advantages of contingency tables. When I'm looking at the word or, I want them to not have a high school diploma. So I'm looking at these 15 people or these three people. But then I also want to include those that made less than 40,000 in my list here. So here I have these 90 people are also going to be included. They made less than $40,000 even though they had a high school diploma. So as I'm going down to calculate my probability, I still have 200 as my bottom number because I'm going to be picking a person from all 200 surveyed. And up here I had 15 plus 3 plus 90 because I had 15, 3, and 90. All of the do not have a high school diploma, all of the make less than $40,000 a year. And if I total those up, I'm going to get um, 18 plus 90 is 108 out of 200. And if I divide that, I'm going to get 0.54 or 54%. The biggest thing people mix here is they either just use, when they're dealing with or, they either use the totals, but the problem with using the totals is that you're double counting a certain group of people, um, or they don't include the ones with both. It's always one or the other or both, all three of those types of situations that go in here. So anything that has a less than 40K, anything that has a do not make a high school diploma. So those are the key things that you want to look for when you're thinking about the word and or the word or when calculating probabilities from a contingency table.